Allegations of child molestation and satanic rituals plagued Kern County back in the 1980s. Dozens of working class parents were put behind bars for crimes they didn't commit. The effort to convict them was dubbed the witch hunt in a documentary narrated by Sean Penn. Well, now, 32 years later, one man who was falsely accused is still fighting to clear his name. 23 ABC's Twilon Nugent takes a look back at Kern County's witch hunt. Unbelievable. I believed in the justice system before that. A justice system that failed dozens of people in Kern County. Go look down there and look at the records, and you tell me that we did it. Just see how they arrested me with no evidence. 32 years ago, a knock on this front door changed Gerardo Gonzalez's life forever. I still remember perfectly, sort of my kids even. We were sitting, ice, we were eating ice cream and peach cobbler. A Kern County Sheriff's deputy was at the door. He took me out to the middle of the yard and started saying, well, I'm going to go in and search your house. And I go, search your house? Do you have a warrant to search my house or what? And he grabbed me around the throat right here and he said, uh, are you an effing lawyer? Later that night, he was sitting inside the sheriff's jail. And so he didn't tell you what you were arrested for that night? Not until I got all the way in. I figured it out myself in the questioning room because they had my little boy and little girl in the next room and I could hear him crying and I could hear my little girl saying, my daddy never did that. Sodomy to uh, penetration to oral copulation. The story of his arrest was similar to at least 26 others convicted in eight sex ring cases during the 1980s. The district attorney at the time, Ed Jagels, was known for being tough on crime. Prosecutors have to demand that the court start sentencing severely. Defendants like John Stoll, Scott and Brenda Kniffin and Gerardo Gonzalez were all accused of molesting their own children, something they all say they never did. Your son said that he was molested by you. And I said, it's impossible. You served time for a crime you didn't commit. Absolutely. The accusations captured the attention of Kern County. I think the allegations were so horrific at the time that you didn't really have people that were used to doing them. The unfamiliarity of such appalling crimes led to what Deputy District Attorney Andrea Kohler says was an imperfect process. The best thing that we can ever do in these type of cases, or any case, is to make sure that the cases are fully investigated. She says that was reflected in the way interviews were conducted and how the defendants were charged. In Kern County in those days, you were guilty before you went in there. You had 150 counts of molestation on you alone. You were done. The counts that arose from the interrogation of children now serve as a lesson for prosecutors. Law enforcement have been trained differently. They, they conduct their entire investigation in a much different manner than, than years ago before anyone really was aware of, of how do we interview a child without um, possibly influencing what they're going to say. Kern County ultimately dropped all the molestation charges. Not only against me. But against all others convicted in the sex abuse cases. The judge tossed out Stoll's conviction saying the testimony that convicted him was unreliable. John Stoll settled with the county for the most amount of money, $5.5 million. 23ABC was there when Stoll was released in 2004. There are other people, there's no doubt in my mind. You know, there are other people that this happened to, and not just in Kern County, other places, you know. And it's just don't give up, you know, just hang in there. Gonzalez, on the other hand, hasn't received a single penny, and he plans to continue to fight until his name is clear. Do you think it's still worth it after 32 years? Sure. All I want is for the whole truth to come out and for them to admit that they did those things. Reporting in Bakersfield, Twilon Nugent, 23 ABC. And we tried to reach out to some of the key players in the trials. Former District Attorney Ed Jagels could not be reached for comment. And former prosecutor and current DA Lisa Green declined our requests for an interview.